So try C and D at this point. We already did uh, A and B. So if you had if you had to do C, you're supposed to convert from yards to inches, and you know that this is true. Start with that. One yard is has 36 inches. And then on the other side, you fill in one of these accordingly. They're giving you yards, happens to be at the top, but it could have been the other way, okay? They could have given you inches and converted them to yards. Then the inches, you'd write that value in here because it has to match with the units on the other side. So 56.64 yards. And this is that we can call this M. Uh, then, then it's confusing. They all think it's meters or something. Let's just call it X. Okay, so you cross multiply that way. 36 times 5664. And you divide by what's left. And that is 2039.04 inches. Remember lengths and weights, anything you can measure can have decimals, right? So it's, we're not talking whole units. So there it is, all right? So Ty Sweeney joined. Thanks for joining, Ty. You're a little late, but better late than never. So write this down, okay, Ty? Good that you joined. So D, let's try that one. Uh, miles to kilometers. We know that this is true. One mile has one point. And yes, you want to use all of them to be accurate, all decimals. So on your formula sheet, they're going to have more than just two decimals, most likely. So the miles you're given, they go on top. And this is your unknown. Okay, so it ends up being, unfortunately, all of these examples always have the known, like the one they're giving you on top but don't get you too used to that okay so these two multiply so 1.609 we can just do this in our notes right that is telling me that you're using all of those decimals 89.2 is that okay so we just go 1.609 and that is 143 0.55 and what are we in what units are we in well we look at the unknown is here which matches kilometers on the other side so we are in kilometers okay, that's what we are after okay so next we have oh, it's a little different these two are a little different so go ahead and write them down All right, it's hard to gauge again, but we're gonna give it a try. So what's happening here? You have different units. You have 25 feet and three inches, and you wanna convert it to just inches, okay? Well, you need to, the, the key here is to convert 25 feet to inches, and then add the three to it, and then you will have the whole length in just inches, right? So let's go ahead and 25 feet, right? You want to convert that to inches. So one foot has 12 inches. You could just go 25 times 12 if you'd like and figure out what that is instead of setting it up, right? So that's 300 inches plus the three that is here. 
So that would be 303 inches. That would be your final answer. So you did 25 feet convert to 300 inches. And then there's already 3 inches that you add, so that's 303. Okay. And the uh, 1 foot as 12 inches came here. Next, we have yards and feet, and we just want the whole thing in feet. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to find out the five yards. We're going to multiply it by three because we want five yards, right? So times three, so that's 15 feet. And then we're going to add the three feet we already had, and so that's 18 feet total. Okay, so that's how you do those types of questions. All right, so now we're gonna, this is the last little bit of the review that I'm gonna do with you and then we're gonna dive into our first unit, okay? So uh, get your, this is gonna be geometry all about, you know, shapes and especially triangles. We're gonna focus on triangles because it's important that you know how to work with them, at least know the basics so that when I teach you the rest, you'll be comfortable doing so. Okay, so I'm gonna move this now. If you have your phones and you're still writing down, take a quick screenshot of this, and then uh, you'll be able to look it up and write it down. If I ever go a little fast, just let me know or type it. I'm sure others will appreciate it. So we're going to write this part down with the blanks and all. So I'm going to cover some of that up. So write that all down, okay? That part right there, and then we're going to do the rest. And also fill in the blanks in a bit, okay? All right, so uh, some of these things sh you should know, right? The sum of, of angles in a triangle is always 180 degrees, right? So that's something that should just be. And uh, I will say that quadrilaterals, it's always 360. Right. So if it's a four-sided, four sides, right, then it's always 360. If it's a triangle, then it's always 180. Okay. If all angles are equal, all sides are equal also. That is a fact. Like There's a relationship between the angles and the sides across from them. If all angles are different, then all sides are different also. By the way, if all angles are equal, all sides are equal, that one is called an equilateral. Okay, equilateral triangle. If all angles are different, then all sides will be different. That one is called a scalene, scalene triangle. Uh, and then if two angles measure the same, then the sides across them measure the same also. Okay. So that one is called an isosceles. Okay. So in a sense... Uh, we're kind of running out of space here, but if you want an equilateral triangle, right, how do we denote that in, in math? 
right? Well, you would have a triangle like this. So if you had a marking like this, it kind of crosses the sides. They're saying that these three sides are all the same. Therefore, all of the angles across these sides would measure the same also. So we kind of go, and this is how you mark the angle like that. And you just say, you go double like that, because otherwise you're saying that these are the same, but you're just now referring to the angle, so you, you use two markings like that. So all sides are the same, all angles are the same. A scalene triangle is different. We're gonna make something like this, like uh, an obtuse, where it's, it's quite clear that all sides are different. Now I'm just gonna label the sides here. We're gonna go one, here we're gonna go two, and for the long side, we're gonna use three markings like that. All, all sides are different, therefore, and it's quite obvious, like the longer the side, right, the, the bigger the angle as well, okay? So the size of the, length the size of the angle will also determine the length of the side okay um, isosceles you have something like this where these two are the same therefore these two angles across from the sides are also the same so this is an isosceles here right so this is an isosceles triangle so we've got equilateral, scalene, isosceles, right? Um, I will add another he thing here. Uh, largest angle is gonna be across, largest angle will be across the longest side. Okay, and therefore you can conclude from that the smallest angle will have the shortest side across from it. That's also true, okay? So classifying each angle, right? So we classify them by side length. So you pick one of these three when you're just looking at the side length and we classify them by angle measure, okay? So acute, acute, obtuse, or right. So a, an acute angle, right, all, all are less than 90. You have one bigger than 90, and you have a 90 degree angle, right? So less, greater, exactly 90. As scalene, all three sides will be different. Isosceles, two sides will be equal, equilateral, three sides will be equal, okay? So you could have a right, right, based on the angle, and a scalene, all sides are, are measured different in length, okay? So let's uh, classify a few here. So I'm gonna ask you to copy these two triangles, leave some room under each of them, or beside them, so that we can uh, answer the question right so class we're gonna, we're gonna classify each one of them right they're gonna have watch there we're gonna call them something based on uh, the angle measure and we're gonna call it something based on the side length of the triangle So what I'm gonna do is, and it actually doesn't matter, but convention has it that you will 
you will first put the name down based on the angles, looking at the angles, and then side. We're going to do that always, right? Angle, side, right? or sides, angles, and sides, right? We're going to first uh, put the angles uh, qualification, like which one of these three goes here, and then we're going to do the sides next. Okay, and okay. trying to see who joined after I did the attendance. Okay, so once you've copied this, um, the first thing you should right away notice is that the markings are there. Okay, so this particular triangle has a marking there, a marking there. Right away, based on side length, this is for sure an isosceles. It might be an equilateral, but we don't know for sure. Let's, I'm going to use a red pen here so that it sticks out a bit more. If, if these two sides are the same, the same length, right, and you know that across from one of them you have a 70, then across the other one that is the same, that has to be 70 as well. That is a property of triangles, right? Because of the side lengths, and you notice, hey, this one's 70, therefore this one has to be 70. So whatever this has been, you'll assign it to the next one. Great. Now we need to figure out this angle here, because we need to look at all the angle measure measures before we assign it to one of these three categories. How would you figure this one out? I don't know if you're familiar with this uh, letter. It's a Greek letter, theta. So that's what we attribute. You could have called it x if you wanted to. Okay. How would you find theta? Well, theta would have to be, notice that all angles in a triangle always add up to 180, right? So given that fact, we'll just go 180 minus 70 and 70, right? So minus 2 times 70, essentially. So it's 180 minus 140. So theta is essentially 40 degrees, right? So we now know that this is 40. So we know all three sides, uh, all three angles. And so none of them is bigger than 90 okay so this is definitely an acute an acute triangle when it comes to the angles sides is an isosceles okay because this angle is different that means that this side will be different also so only two sides are the same for sure okay next Okay, we've got this triangle here. I'm going to make a make a note of the fact that the markings are there. Okay. And that given these two angles being the uh, side lengths, right? This is a side length. They're the same. Therefore, since this is 45, this will also be 45 here. Okay, we filled that in. Now, what would this angle here be? And we're going to call it theta as well. Well, we're going to say that theta I will find by going 180 minus two 45 degree angles. Right? That's, that's 180 minus 2 times 45 is 90. So theta is 90 degrees. Okay? So what does that make it? As soon as you have one 90 degree angle, we go to angle measure and this actually becomes a right triangle. Okay, so this is a right angle. That makes this whole triangle a right, we call it a right triangle. And what, what is it based on the sides? Well, if this is 90, let's put 90 here. Um, you only have two angles that are the same, or you can say the two sides are the same. It's still in an isosceles triangle. 
So it's a right isosceles triangle based on that information. scroll up or scroll down I should say and write down these two as well and just by observation see if you could name it you don't really have to show a whole lot of work. You just have to see, would you be able to name it, right? Based on angle and side, right? Angles and sides. So uh, copy that down, give it a try. I'm just gonna respond to an email here. Okay, this one should be pretty straightforward. All sides are the same. Okay, so in terms of sides, there is nothing other than saying equilateral. Okay, it's an equilateral triangle, no doubt about that. But what about the angles? I mean, yes, it looks acute, but what what are the angle measures of every single equilateral triangle? Doesn't matter if it's a large one or a small one. Okay, it's always 60 degrees because basically um, the angle, right? The angle would always be 180 split into three because they're all exactly the same. So it would be 60 degrees each. Okay. So since they're all 60, they're all less than 90, so we would, would write down acute. Acute equilateral triangle. In fact, all equilateral triangles are acute. So just saying equilateral would be fine there. Uh, what about this one? It definitely looks obtuse, right? So there's no, not much information given. We know that these are different, different in length. And we definitely know if this is obtuse, right? This is the largest angle of all of them. Therefore, this has to be the longest side, right? It just has to be by that property, meaning that this side will be longer than 18, which is right now the second longest, right? So this will be even bigger than 18. So all three sides will be different in length. So we would call this a scalene. Okay, so most triangles are scalene. Uh, it's either isosceles or equilateral that is uh, unique, right? And angles, this would definitely be an obtuse, right? So you would call this an obtuse 
obtuse scalene triangle. Okay. Oh, I didn't record that part. So again, I'm just going to rephrase. We had two out of the three. So we're basically working the other way around. Like sometimes they have markings on the sides. We work inwards towards the angles. We had two angles given. We figured out by subtracting the two from 180 to get the third one. We identified that that is a bigger than 90. So that'll be obtuse. And all three sides are different, therefore scalene. How do we know they're all different? Because all angles measure, have a different um, measure, all right? Okay. We're going to grab our booklets now and start there. So I'm going to start a new recording for that part, all right?